Hello there, and welcome to uh, CM40 Basic Training, a uh, module where we consider some of the uh, commonly used graph types, uh, the graph annotations. So in the previous module, we looked at um, some of the options, or most of the options available for creating and modifying uh, chart type annotations on the page, which you see here. A graph type is very similar to a chart, except it has uh, more options for how you want to view the data within the object itself. So uh, before we actually create a graph, let's look at what's available in CM40. So if I go here to help, go to help topics, I can go here to applications, CM40, CM40 Classic, and I'm going to go to, uh, let's see, build templates, annotation, and then if I expand that, I should have uh, charts and graphs, and then here there's graphs, and then Actually, there's graph type right here. Uh, there's an explanation, again, for graphs. If I click here on graph annotation, um, it says that we can use the graph tool to create a uh, new graph. And we create it the same way we create a chart, which is clicking on an icon, uh, dragging a box to a particular size, and then letting go, and then going inside of that to change the styles or the types. But let's see what uh, types we have here. So uh, for graphs, we have a trend graph. Uh, we have X bar and R, X bar and S, XMR and MAMR. These four are for control charts. Uh, if you want to use graphs in order to show that data. Um, and the thing about graphs is it allows you to view your um, control chart limits uh, within the different plot spaces that you have, as well as some of the out of control uh, check boxes that um, are in the data sets that you create. So when you have control uh, limits calculated, and you want to see whether your data is trending or on a side of mean or any other statistical out of control type, uh, graphs can work in conjunction with the options you select in your data set to look for uh, those types of uh, behaviors when it comes to your, your data. So we have trend, we have control charts for graphs as you see here. And then we also have other types like uh, box and whisker, which is an analysis that lets you see multiple uh, features at once. And you can see for the range of samples that are selected, um, what is the high and low value outliers, whether the outliers are good or bad CPK, um, what's the median for the data, and what's the uh, top and bottom quartile based on the size of the uh, indicators that you see here. Uh, besides box and whisker, you also have uh, Six Sigma graphs, which plots uh, the data showing, again, the, the, I think the median inner outer quartile, but against the uh, tolerance, which is shown as the hatch marks there. So it's showing the relation between uh, the data uh, in terms of Six Sigma in the, in the tolerances. And then we also have histogram, uh, which can show the uh, distribution of your data regarding the uh, deviations, how they're clustered together. And then we can also put an overlay curve on that information to show um, the spread of the data according to your you know, standard deviations or if it most resembles the um, shape of a bell curve or not, whether the data is normalized. 
Uh, Pareto charts are also available, as well as normality uh, charts, which work in conjunction with histograms to show whether the data is normal, if it follows a normal probability plot of a uh, line, and it'll plot the data points against that line and give you your correlation coefficient to how normal the data is considered. There's also benchmark charts, which are used widely in CM4D. These can be used to plot or actually show percentages of values that fall within certain ranges that you can pick. So benchmark charts can work in accordance with scores that we set up in order to uh, evaluate any data that's handled or given to it and it will put the data into different ranges based on what the data values are and plot what the percentage of values in each range are in the chart above. Uh, target charts are another type of um, graph, actually, target graphs. These can plot two axes at the same time to give you a visual indication of where the point might fall uh, within a plane, for instance, maybe the X, Y, or Y, Z plane, and it will uh, plot those points for you. Um, besides that, we also have range charts, which function similar to the Six Sigma charts, where it gives you the total range of your data and plots that against your uh, tolerance band to show where the data falls in relation to the tolerances. And then finally we have a uh, chart called a polar chart which is similar to a target chart which can be used to plot polar data for constructed features of the polar type or for polar data coming from holes. And with uh, polar charts you can plot either multiple points or multiple features at once and see what the relation is uh, for a single sample, or you can plot one feature and show multiple samples within the chart. And basically, it will give you an idea of how close or far away the points are clustered together and show tolerances as a circle as well, so you can indicate or see um, whether the points are within a certain tolerance area or not. So those are some of the main um, graphs that exist for CM4D. Some of these are special case, or we'll have a module just for explaining um, their use. For instance, uh, Polar and Target will probably have a separate module. But there's others that are commonly used as well um, that we can look at and just see the general behavior of how to create a uh, graph chart. So to create a graph chart what I will do um, is first probably make a data set that's just for uh, the graph data. Again it's not necessary to have a data set called graphs but in this example I just want to make one that will serve as the source of data for the new graph type. So what we can do is choose new data set. I'll call this graph data. Uh, I'll keep yeah, I'll keep the standard SIFT rules for this, except I'll have position. Um, actually, let me do primary for this. Do primary vector for any of the features I add into here. Primary for whole. And I'm going to go to data source. I'm going to say all features in query, all samples, and I can select this active query. So I'm setting this up to serve as a source of data for uh, graph charts. So I have graph data. And what I'll do next is make a new page for my uh, graph graph annotations. So I'll go here to Sheets and right click on my main set, choose New Sheet, and I'll call this Graph Annotations. 
limitations. So I'm going to click on that sheet, and I guess one of the first things I'll show is actually a uh, box and whisker chart. So actually, I will change the name here. I'll call this box and whisker. And what I'm going to do is go to the top where I have my different icons for the annotation types. So text, view, chart, table. Uh, this one here is the one for graph. So I'll click here on new graph and I'm just going to draw a box and then let go. Uh, for this case, um, for box and whisker, I want to make it the graph bigger than I normally would for charts. Um, I have this drawn and to edit this it will be the same as uh, any other object in the white space where you right click and go to properties and in here uh, where it says chart in this case it would say graph for the graph type and with this there is a drop down that you can choose if I click on graph type I can choose a particular type of graph I want this to become. So these are some of the options that we saw in the help file. Uh, what I will choose is the box and whisker option. Um, once that's chosen, I can go here to data source. And here where it says data set, I can connect to that data set I created called graph data. So for the case of box and whisker, you will probably end up plotting multiple features at once. So we don't need to use row one through one. Instead, we can just say use all rows. And this will grab all the data available within that data set. So here's the data set tab. Here's the graph data uh, data set that I created. If I right click view that in grid I'm seeing a lot of the coordinates for the different features that I included but I think what I want to do is make sure I only have primary for surface features and primary for whole features because it seems like it has two dimensions for each of the surface features so I can go back into this graph data I'm going to go to sift rules and I see that two are turned on. So I'm going to turn off position, hit OK. And now that has reduced the number of features seen within the uh, box and whisker graph. So the way this is being displayed is the horizontal axis or bottom axis is showing you the individual features that are loaded. And then the vertical axis is showing you um, the vertical range for the data. So it's showing the, the high and the low are the outliers, or the high and low value, the quartile values, which are the edges of the uh, boxes for each of the features, the median, which is the line going through for the data, and then any other outliers, which are these diamond shapes that you see. Um, so there's some options to change the cosmetics for this. For instance, if I right click and go to properties, I can go here now to this component, box and whisker, and hit edit. And that will take me into that, which now I can go to the plot space for this by clicking edit here. And to adjust certain things here, what I can do is go to the top plot area. Um, the scale is automatic for what it's trying to show here. That's fine. But if I go to lines, let's say I want to see what the tolerance lines are for these features. I can go to lines, 
turn on spec control limits. I'm going to change the style. I prefer red and dashes for that. If I hit OK, it's going to give me red dashes for the tolerance. So if you notice, some of the tolerances are wider than others. If the tolerances were all different for each point, you would see a series of steps or hash marks for each of the columns or each of the indicators here for the for the different features. So this will plot the individual tolerances for each of the points. It just so happens that for a lot of the points they have the same tolerance and then for the rest they also have the same tolerance. So if I go back to properties, edit the component, edit again, and back to the top area, I can add in also maybe the nominal zero line. And then when it comes to series, if I want to change what this coloring is, I believe you can change what the outlier marker is in the coloring. So if I go to series, there is something called series style. Right now, it looks like it's set to aqua. That's this color here. So if I wanted to change that uh, to say, another color. Let's pick um, light yellow. That'll be fine. We can do that. And then for the marker, that would be the little dot there. Right now it's set to navy. We could set that to light blue just as a, a choice. And then if I hit OK, hit OK, it would change those markings uh, accordingly. And of course, if you wanted to adjust the vertical scale, you can um, by going back here to properties, going into edit, and it would be this here. It's set to auto, but we could reduce this if we want it to, to be the high and the low value of the data. So the minimum, I could say tilde low for the variable, meaning the lowest value, and then the max value would be tilde high. And let's see if that works. Yeah, so now it expands just to this high value and that low value. But if you notice, it only shows one of the tolerance bands because the lowest value is still within the lower bound of the tolerance. So you can play with the scaling that you have or keep it under auto by turning that back on. It will disregard these settings and automatically scale the data back to how it was. Now another type of uh, common graph is a uh, histogram. Those are created in a similar way. Uh, what we can do is make another sheet just for displaying that type of graph. Uh, so I'm going to click here on Sheets and go to Main Sheet, right click and click Choose New, New Sheet. Here, I'll call this graph annotations histogram. So now I can click here on the sheet. Again, I can click on new graph and I'll make a bigger um, graph annotation. And if I right click and go to properties for that, again, I can click here on graph type 
and this time I can choose uh, histogram, which is right here. And let's see here. I don't think I'll need that for this. Uh, so I can choose histogram, go here to data source, and I'm going to again choose graph data. Um, let's see. For this, I'm going to try to do, let's see what happens if we choose all rows. I see it overlays the histograms for every point, which we don't want. So what we'll do is say use row one through one. And it'll give us the histogram for the first row. So what it's doing here is showing us a uh, tolerance range from negative one to positive one and showing us with these numerical increments here how many data values from the samples fall at these different positions. So here it says six data values, then there is two, and then there is one and one. So we have 10 samples loaded saying six fall within this range of negative 0.36 two of them fall within this range and then there's two separate ones which fall into these other ranges so in doing that it's kind of charting how your data is clustered together when it comes to the deviations um, how far or are they away from your tolerance bands um, and what's the distribution of that data so this works very well when you have a lot more samples to work with. For instance, where it says samples here, if I go back to the data source and say last 30 samples, then the bands are a little thicker and it changes the shape because we have more sample data to work with and show where our data is falling for this particular point. Just like the charts, you can always right click, go into edit mode. Uh, in this case though, there is the annotation and then there is the um, histogram inside that. So I would have to click, right click, go to edit mode again. And then I would be in the uh, object for the histogram where it has this default uh, text box for the feature name. So if there's any other type of information, of course, I could shrink the size of this, add in other text boxes while I'm in both edit modes, and add that into this, this object. So again, uh, the chart will automatically scale to account for um, the tolerance bands. Um, and it will also scale to account for the uh, complete number or the largest number of sample data points that fall within a given deviation range. But we can always add more lines and change the scaling of the graph. For instance, what if we want to see this um, scaled according to um, standard deviations instead of um, whatever method it's using here automatically. Uh, we could go to properties, histogram, edit, go to the plot space, edit that. And here for the plot general, this is the horizontal axis here. We can turn off auto and tell that the minimum, um, we could do something here where we say Minimum equals uh, STDDEV is the variable for standard deviation. Uh, six STDDEV, I, I believe, is the variable 
for uh, six standards of deviation. So honestly, what we need to do, it, there's going to be six standard deviations total. So we can make this three. And this will be negative three. So um, let's see here. this and then uh, shift eight for the multiply symbol let's say times in parentheses negative one and then end with a fancy bracket and then the max will just be tilde three stddeb and we will increment by tilde stddeb so this can set our horizontal scale to increment by standard or deviations and go three out to the right, three out to the left. And then if we want to have the tolerance lines, but if we want an overlay curve, we can do that as well. So if I go here to top area, go to lines, there is something called overlay. We can turn that on and maybe change the coloring to be a bit more obvious. Do that, and then hit OK, OK. So now we have uh, the scale adjusting for, I think, the standard deviations. We have an overlay curve that's laid on top of the data. Increment by standard deviation. Or we could just try to divide this into segments. Divide it. Divide it by six. Try to do that. Increment by STDDEV. That's what I would like to do. Uh, let me try this. So the minus three TDDEV. I think that's the proper variable for. No, it doesn't look like there is. Uh, let's check the variable list. I'm going to go here to well, topics. Uh, that's process statistics, but I want actual variables. So uh, I'll go here to CM40 variables. And what I want is the statistical process control. So I have here mean plus and then mean minus
So minus three and then plus three. That's what it says for the variable. So if I go back to my chart, actually here, max should be plus three, minus three, there we go. So now it's doing plus three standard deviations to the right, minus three to the left, and it's incrementing by each standard of deviation. Um, and if I want one more line, I can put a mean line on as well. make that color green a dash so as we see there's there's different options that we can turn on to change the cosmetics of a graph very similar to what we do for charts and the other graphs but that is the gist of how we go about making a histogram and then of course the markers themselves the boxes that we see those can be changed as well if you go back to plot space if we go to series so right now it's the bar type by default but if we click here on marker style we can change the coloring of this if we wanted to so i could make that light blue with no cross marking or hatch marks and it would change that accordingly okay so the last type of uh, graph I like to show for this module is a benchmark uh, style which is very commonly used by customers to uh, show summary data or percentages for values within certain ranges. So what we'll do is first decide the type of benchmark. I think one thing that's commonly used is a benchmark chart to show percentages of values that fall within certain ranges for CPK. So uh, if a company is looking to see uh, how well their process is doing, they might want to have a summary chart that shows what the CPK values are for all their features and what ranges those fall into for very good, good, fair, and bad. So the first thing to do is to make a data stack that can hold CPK values because that is a calculated type of um, value. So it's not something that is directly contained within a data set. So in order to do statistics on that or have a chart link to data that has CPK values, we'll use one of the operations we saw uh, in a previous module for data stacks to hold the CPK values for this graph data data set. So to do that, we're going to right click and choose new data stack and now I'm going to double click on this object I'm going to name this um, CPK values again this can be any name you want but for uh, this example I'll just call it CPK values and what I want to do is go to the data source and I want to use this statistics evaluation so I'm going to choose uh, this actually this function st statistics click on the drop down and I'm going to choose CPK so this is telling this data set what type of function to perform to whatever data stacks I pass to it so to put the graph data data set into here I'm going to click here on data sets click on graph data add it into this left window pane 
So if I do that and then hit OK, this data stack should contain all the CPK values for the features in graph data. So these are all the different features. On each line, there is a certain type of data. So what the data stack will do is look at all of these values and compute what the CPK value is for this feature for that dimension that's found on that line and do that for each one of these. So if it does that, if, when I right click here on uh, this data stack and view that in grid, it's giving me the CPK value for each of the rows in that graph data data set. So what we're looking at is CPK values here. So now that we have CPK values actually stored in a data stack object, we can use the benchmark graph to try to display that data. So to do that, I'm going to go back here to Sheets, and I'm going to right-click and choose New Sheet for this main set, and call this Graph Annotations. Benchmark. So now I have a benchmark sheet created. I'm going to click here on benchmark. And for this, again, I'm going to click on new graph. And I'm going to draw a particular graph. Um, now that this is here, if I right click and go to properties for this, uh, where it has graph type, I can choose benchmark. But now that I choose this, there's a new option that appears called select score. So uh, there'll be another module just about scores, but basically a uh, score is a function that you can create within CM4D that will uh, be handed all the values of a particular data set or uh, annotation object that are supposed to display your information. It will go to the score, feed it all the values that it's displaying, and the score will put it in a particular category based on uh, bins that are created. And the bins are uh, based on particular values or ranges, and if your value falls within a particular range, then it will fit into that bin and be tallied. So it's a way of sorting through values that are fed to it and putting it into particular categories. So what I need to do is actually make a score uh, that sorts CBK values. So what I'll do is uh, simply hit cancel here. And like I said, we'll, we'll go into how to create scores manually, but there is a way of getting the software to make automatic scores. If I go to document and go to scores, I'll have this document properties. And what I can do is click on this button, build examples, and it will create a series of different scores automatically. So now that I've done that, I'm going to click here on styles because what happens is scores, uh, once the bins are created, it will uh, categorize the values, but you can assign a particular style to those bins so that if your value falls into a certain category, there'll be a certain color or number weight assigned. So I'm going to click here on styles. It looks like there are styles that already exist by default. Uh, within this uh, base document. So these styles are probably what's going to be used by these scores. So now that I have the scores created and styles already exist, I can hit OK. And I'm going to right click, go to properties, I'm going to choose benchmark for this graph. And here where it says select score, I'm going to choose CPK. 
Then I'm going to go to data source and select CPK values as the source of information that's going to be fed to this graph in all rows. And when I hit OK, I'm going to get whatever color bands uh, were set up by that automatic score and the styles for each band. So um, if I go into here, I have a coloring band and then I have a table at the bottom. So when I double clicked and went into edit mode, it looked like it rearranged that table slightly. If I want to make that bigger, what I could do is make the object bigger itself. Or I could go into the object and shrink the uh, percentage indicator here and expand this table. If I wanted to change the uh, font size, I believe I could do that for this table by going into the edit mode, right clicking on the table and going to properties. And uh, in the table dialog, I could go here to cell style, setup, go to font, and maybe change that to something smaller. So it changes the font size here. It looks like there's special conditions for the values here. See if format is turned on. It's not. Okay. So it's still changing the font size for us there. So with the table that's embedded with this object or this graph, what it's doing is giving us a breakdown for the different bins that were created in the score. And it's showing the number of values that are greater than 1.33 number of values that are less than 1.33, less than 1, less than 0.5, values that have some sort of error, and then those that are less than 0. And then giving you the number and the percentages as well. Now, for this, the scale is automatically set from 0 to 100. If you wanted to change the increments, you could, like we did the other vertical scales, by going to the chart, benchmark chart, hitting edit, going to the plot space, and then going to the top area where we have vertical access. And we could change this, for instance, to be minimum of zero, maximum of 100, and maybe scale by 10. to change what that looks like. So those are some of the uh, standard graphs that exist. There are a few others, but in general, they will all be created in a similar fashion. Um, there might be some special cases like um, target charts and also uh, polar charts, which we can consider in a separate module. Um, that have a few more considerations for them, but in general, as you've seen, uh, the options for selecting the graph, for adding in the data, and for the, uh, displaying the information is very similar to what we've seen already with charts and with text boxes. So with that, we will um, end the module when it comes to basic options for graphs. Thank you for watching, and uh, we will move on to the next module.